Okay, foldable phones. Up until now, they've been something that we love to look at, but also something that very few people should actually buy. Oppo is claiming they've just changed that. This is the Find N, the Finding Nemo. No, I'm just kidding. It's the company's first ever foldable. And from what they're saying, it finally fixes them. They're saying that this is the phone that will turn foldables from novelty to necessity. You get a 33 watt charging brick in the box, a couple of manuals, a USB-C charging cable, and hold up a second, that's not a big phone. I really should stress that, it is tiny. Like, when I first heard that Oppo was making a foldable, I just kind of assumed that it would be the size of Samsung's Fold, which is almost two full phones. But in actuality, even completely unfolded, this thing is barely bigger than one. And in four key ways, the Find N does actually make you think, yeah, this is how foldables should be. For starters, the hinge. Every foldable has a hinge, it's how they fold. This is by far the best one I've ever seen. And it's not just that it's really firm and that it can hold its position anywhere from 50 degrees to 120 degrees. It's not just that it's been tested to last five and a half years of folding with no issues. It's not just that there's no gap when the phone is folded. And it's not just the immeasurably gratifying sound it makes every time you snap it shut. No, the most impressive part of this hinge is that it practically eliminates the crease on the screen. Every single foldable that I've ever used has a crease going down the middle. It's not surprising, it's like folding a piece of paper. When you open it up again, you're gonna see that line. But this hinge, it prevents the screen from needing to fold. If you watch really carefully when I close it, you'll see that instead of pressing it into a U shape, it's actually allowing the screen to rest in a water drop shape. Kind of like if I held a piece of paper like this. And because it's not squeezing it shut, Oppo is saying that this phone will show the crease up to 80% less than other foldables. Which, at least from my eight days of using it, pretty much means you can't see it when the screen's on. I mean, who knows, if I gave it six months, it might develop a crease, but I can tell you that other foldables have a crease straight out the box. And thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this. But there's another pain point that Oppo is saying they've solved here to make this the definitive foldable phone. The aspect ratio problem. That is disgusting. The fact that if we take Samsung's foldable, for example, it's this super thin TV remote-like experience when folded, and then almost a square when unfolded. Two screens, neither of which are ideal for phone-related content, all amplified by the fact that it's slightly taller than it is wide. And so if you actually wanted to consume content, there is one extra step in that you then have to rotate it too. Well, the Find N goes for a stockier approach. Because it's so much shorter, it can afford to be just a little bit wider while still being usable. And that means, one, you can still use the front 1080p-ish screen almost as if it was just a normal phone. It is a little bit wonky looking, and I did think it was weird to start with that one side of the screen is flat while the other is curved, but having used it, I'm pretty glad it's like that, because it makes navigation gestures just way more pleasant than if it was a sharp cutoff. And two, is that the second you unfold it, it is still square-ish, but because it's wider than it is tall, you're automatically in landscape mode, ready to consume media. And hey, if you like consuming my media, then a sub to the channel would be opportune. But it's not just that they've been making good decisions when it comes to the hardware. I wasn't expecting how fleshed out the core software would be. See, when I first got this phone, there wasn't a single leaked photo on the entire internet. No one knew what this was, which is rarely the case just before a consumer-ready phone launches. And so I just assumed, oh, it'll be some sort of internal prototype concept device. But no, the software experience makes it clear that this is a phone Oppo spent a long time planning for. As it turns out, even though this is technically their first ever foldable, they told me they've spent the last four years making six other foldable phones. This is just the first one that they thought good enough to release. So either they're extremely good at keeping leaks or, well, or no one cares. But what I'm trying to say here is that while the phone is first generation, the internally developed first party software has clearly been in the works for a while. I did notice two instances where words were cut off in the UI, but apart from that, it is fast, smooth, and tactile. 
The camera interface makes really good use of the space provided. The live wallpapers that open up proportional to how much the phone is open are delightful. And the split screen multitasking is handled gracefully. You feel like you're literally playing Fruit Ninja. Something like that. I can't believe I actually did that. <laughs> Didn't realize it would squirt so much. And then the final cornerstone of the Find N is its price. Now, because this phone is being launched in China only for now, the only pricing info that I have is that it will be less than 10,000 renminbi, which I realize is not a hugely useful figure given that no one watching is from China, I think. But it's useful for context because we do know that Samsung Z Fold 3 is about 12,000. So assuming that Oppo does one day launch their foldables globally, I think there's a pretty good chance that they will actually undercut Samsung. Should probably put this knife away. Okay, all that great stuff aside, there's three reasons that I don't think Oppo's quite nailed it yet. And contrary to the marketing, these are significant enough reasons that I don't think this is the phone that will change foldables from novelty to necessity. A big one being that even more so than its competition, I think this is a novelty. Like, why does someone buy a foldable phone? It's so that they can either have a huge screen that can be folded into a normal phone form factor, or a normal size screen that can be folded up into a mini form factor, right? Those are the only two credible reasons in my eyes, but this isn't really either. It's not small enough when folded that you can just slip it into a shirt pocket or women's jeans, and even when it's full size, it's not big enough to satisfy a power user's needs. Corner to corner, this is only a 7.1 inch screen. And so, as far as I'm concerned, the only real benefit from it being smaller is the novelty factor. I mean, it's, it's kind of cute. But there is a real cost. The fact that it's so short and stumpy makes it not just less elegant, but it also means that I almost can't hold it without in some way touching the module. And that they've had to make it thicker. You don't notice it so much when it's unfolded, but when both layers are stacked on top of each other, you really just wish that you could just slice the bottom one off. Actually, where's that knife? Like, this is the arc that my thumb makes. Even though it's a titchy little front screen, the thickness means that there's a good 30% of it that I've still got to reshuffle to be able to use. Now, remember how I said that Oppo's first party software was awesome? Yeah, well, the third party software on this ain't so hot. Now, to cut Oppo some slack, this is launching in China only, and the key Chinese apps seem to be optimized fine. But assuming that the plan is to make their foldables global one day, this is just me saying, there is a lot of work to do. TikTok opens sideways, Instagram looks like it was optimized by my cat, and pretty much no app that you'd want to use around the world has any support for the phone's screen splitting flex form feature. And this is the problem when you spend too long prototyping. The fact that Oppo has been working on this for years and that they've gone through so many different hardware iterations is great for their own software. It means they've had ages to make sure that it's just right. But as far as external partnerships go, like working with Google to optimize their apps and add exclusive foldable features, it means that they're pretty much right at the beginning. But my most fundamental reservation with recommending something like this is that Oppo's claiming they fixed foldables here. They're basically saying, look, poor hinges and poor durability are the current key problems with foldables. We've sorted them. And while it does feel like they have sorted those things, I don't think those were the main problems. The reasons that I've so far held off on recommending one are not screen creases, it's more fundamental things like the thickness from having two layers, the inefficiency of having to have two separate displays and three sets of cameras when you can only use one at once. The fact that the inner screen is basically a square, which is not ideal for anything except specifically split screen multitasking. Watching my own videos, for example, I'm ironically getting a bigger viewing experience on my iPhone. And the space constraints, which mean that foldables have never had the best camera systems. And really, the Find N doesn't fix any of those problems. To clarify, the camera is really not bad. This uses the same 50 megapixel main camera as Oppo's Find X3 Pro, their highest end phone so far. It feels premium, and I have taken some great photos with it. It's got plenty of fun toys to play with, for example, a rather decent cinematic video mode, and even the ability to use the hinge as a tripod to take time-lapse videos of the night sky. But you will feel the compromise when switching to the ultra-wide camera, which is much lower resolution, and the zoom camera, which has just two times magnification. And like, this is a fast phone. Snapdragon 888, up to 12 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage, 
but it doesn't feel as fast as it should be because of the inefficiency of having to make two separate screens for a foldable. See, because making both the front and the inside screens high refresh rate 120Hz panels would push the price of the phone up a lot, Oppo's decided to make the inside screen 120Hz and then the front screen 60Hz. Now, that might sound like a good compromise, but if I slow both of these down, you'd be able to see how much of a difference there is. Like, having a 60Hz screen in of itself is fine. You get used to it and you don't really think about it, but having both a 120Hz and a 60Hz screen on the same phone is like taunting you. It's letting you experience the good life every time you open, but then reminding you of what your life used to be like every time you close. Here's the thing though, while I'm not necessarily saying you should try and import one of these yourself, the fact that this exists, and the fact that Oppo has got so many things right on the first try, especially that price, is exciting. And it's really good news for anyone thinking of getting into foldables in the future, because it's gonna push the market forward. Okay, at this point, I probably don't need to tell you what a VPN is. If you wanna either browse the internet anonymously, change the location of your device to another country, to watch TV shows from that country, or just to avoid censorship, or to escape data throttling from your service provider, then a VPN is the way to go. But then you're faced with the question of which one? And at least from what I've seen, there is no VPN on the planet that is offering close to the value of what Surfshark VPN is. Unlimited number of users and 24 seven support for this kind of price. If you use the code BOSS, you get an 83% discount and specifically for this holiday season, an extra four months for free, which takes the total price to like $2.13 a month. We spend more on paper clips than that. Oh yeah, and it also has the option to remove ads and trackers while browsing. To see the biggest tech you've ever seen, click here. Or to find out why I think the metaverse might be a problem, that video is here. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.